Welcome to a holiday edition of Lip Switch with the Santa Claus. Ooh, is this like one of those nature documentaries where Santa forages for cookies in his natural habitat? No, Cricket. Remy is referring to the 1994 comedy, drama, fantasy, family Christmas classic. That's too many genres. Back in my day, there was only two. Funny and not funny. Well, as long as it has a valuable lesson about the meaning of Christmas, I think we're in for a treat. <laughs> yeah, whatever, Dad. Let's switch some lips. Once upon a time, in a film made by outlaws, there was a rude toy salesman. Hi, I'm Scott Calvin. I guess I'm kind of a jerk. And his sweet, innocent son named Charlie. <laughs> I'm a perfect angel. <laughs> On Christmas Eve, Charlie's mom, Laura, leaves him to spend the night with his dad. Listen, you and your daddy are gonna have a great Christmas, okay? Oh, are you sure? Listen, I love the guy, but you know he can't cook, right? Of course. Love you, Mama. Mwah. What would you like me to cook for dinner? How about a turkey you don't set on fire? Ah! Ah! Called it. So after a sad dinner with other sad dads who can't cook... Guilty. Mr. Calvin reads his son a bedtime story. Twas the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a... Charlie, would you stop snoring? Sorry, Dad, but this book's kind of boring. If only something unexpected and exciting would happen. Well, that night... Dad! Dad! Wake up! <laughs> what is it? There's something on the roof. I think the raccoons are trying to break in again. But when Mr. Calvin goes outside to investigate, he finds something way jollier than a raccoon. Excuse me, sir. Ah, you startled me! <laughs> hey, careful! <laughs> What have I done? Hey, pal, you okay? <laughs> that wasn't too bad a fall, right? Dad, you killed Santa! What? No, I... Well, you're more wicked than the Grinch and Scrooge combined. Son, are we sure this is even the real Santa? Why don't you check if he has a business card? Now, why would Santa have a business... Oh. If you are reading this, congratulations. You are the new Santa Claus. What? This is awesome! You're not just my dad, you're my Santa dad! So the previous Santa magically vanishes, then things get even weirder. Well, bless my biscuits, it's Santa's sleigh! Your sleigh now. Enough chit-chat, let's get this show on the road! Who are you? I'm Comet, the sassy reindeer. Buckle up, new guy! And so our <laughs> heroes take off with absolutely no idea what they're doing. <laughs> Giddy up, magic horsies! <laughs> They head to the next house on Santa's list, which I thought would be the one next door, but it's not. Well, I guess I have to unlawfully enter this home and leave gifts for children. Not in your undies, you ain't. You gotta put on that Santa suit. I don't know, son. It seems disrespectful to the late Santa. Hey, we got billions of homes to hit. Suit up, slowpoke. So Mr. Calvin puts on Kris Kringle's clothes and grabs his bag of presents, and oh my gosh, it's magic! Uh, ah! You got this, Santa Dad. But how's he gonna get down the... Oh my gosh, more magic! Somebody explain what is happening! Watch out for the bag! Ow! Dang physical comedy. Santa delivers some shoes and a truck that no one had time to wrap. And then he gets chased out of the house by a dog. Bark! Get out of here! So, after a long night full of magic chimneys... That's just a stovepipe. Ah! I got jelly bones! Confused children... How come I don't have a beard? I have a cartoon mouth and you're worried about my beard? And some constructive criticism from Comet. You're the worst Santa ever! I'm trying! Mr. Calvin finishes his route and reports back to... The planet Hoth from Star Wars. I mean, the North Pole. Mm, welcome to Santa's workshop. Please keep your hands and feet inside the sleigh. Wow, look at all the child elves. The elves welcome their new Santa and totally forget about the one that just vanished. Well, hello there, Santa 197. Did you say 197? This guy's a goner. I give him two years, Tubbs. My name is Bernard, and I'm president of the elves. Terrific job on your first Christmas. First and last. I'm not doing this again. I beg to differ, sir. This is now your permanent occupation. That makes me the Prince of Christmas. No, no, Charlie. This is all just a big mix-up. Did you not read the Santa Claus? The what? The Santa Claus. The legal pun that's also the name of the movie. Oh! Oh, that's why there's an E. It's all right here in the microscopic fine print. If you put on Santa's clothes, you have to be Santa from now on because we said so. Well, how was I supposed to see that before? Hey, that's on you, Pop. Now, Charles, take this. It'll be important later in the movie. Heck yeah. Thanks, Boss Elf. Exhausted from this pure insanity, Mr. Calvin gets a much-needed sleep. <sighs> You're snoring again, son. But when Mr. Calvin wakes up, he's back at home. What a strange dream that definitely didn't happen. Wait a minute. Gasp! Red pajamas! 
no dead Santas here. Mr. Calvin is relieved until he visits Charlie's school for career day. Yeah, so basically my dad killed Santa Claus, usurped his throne to become the new Santa, and now I'm the Prince of Christmas. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Charlie's just joking. I'm a toy salesman, a totally normal toy salesman. You kids have any questions? Why did you kill Santa? I didn't kill Santa. Did you kill him because he gave you coal as a kid? Kids, I assure you, that did not happen. Oh, it happened. I saw the body. No, Charlie, that was a dream! Then how come you're sweating so much? Because I don't like public speaking! So Mr. Calvin takes Charlie to see polar bears and straighten everything out. What'd you want to talk to me about, Santa Dad? Son, I know you think we went to the North Pole, but we didn't. <laughs> then how do you explain where I got this? And that's a snow globe. It's an extremely common object. Charlie won't listen, but his parents are sure he'll forget all about this Santa stuff in a week. My dad is Santa, no matter what they say, we rode a magic sleigh. My dad is Santa. They were wrong. How can one man, in one night, visit all the children of the world? You know what, Neil? You're a real downer. Since Charlie refuses to be gaslit, Mr. Calvin gets him to agree to keep it a secret. Okay, maybe, but still probably not. I'm Santa Claus. Will you please just keep it a secret so people don't think we're nuts? Sounds fair to me, Santa Dad. Atta boy! Is it okay if I still call you Santa Dad? No. Well, I'm going to anyway. Just when Mr. Calvin thinks his troubles are over, things start to get weird. Time to do what I always do when I wake up. Look at my own face. Ah! What the? How did I gain 20 pounds overnight? Am I a sleep eater? Oh well, nothing to worry about. Then Mr. Calvin goes to the doctor. Your test came back. You've got reindeer rabies and a severe case of jelly belly. Huh, what could that mean? And then he gets a bunch of packages in the mail. An endless list of children's names? What could that mean? Seriously? When is this bozo gonna realize he's Santa Claus? Aw, come on. He's still in denial. He just needs one more thing to... Ah! That'll do it. Mr. Calvin goes full Santa, but Laura is a little creeped out. I can't help it. I promise I haven't lost my mind. Then a bunch of talky stuff happens with a lawyer. Talky, talky, talky. And Charlie gets taken away from Mr. Calvin. No, Santa Dad. Flash forward like a whole year. It's almost Christmas again, but Mr. Calvin is still sad. It's ho, ho hard to get in the Christmas spirit without my boy. I wish Dad was here. This food would be burnt and inedible, but at least he'd be with us. I just gotta see him. So Mr. Calvin visits Charlie. Yay, my Santa dad is back. But Neil and Laura do not like it. Charlie, he's not Santa. Get out of my face with that, Neil. I just came to tell you goodbye before I head to the North Pole. Ooh, ooh, you gotta let me come with ya. I don't know. I'll let you look at my cool snow globe again if you do. No! Oh, okay, you can come. Ah, uh, bring it in, big guy. Then Bernard shows up to zap everyone away to the North Pole. Initiate teleportation magic. Lululu. The only downside is Laura thinks Mr. Calvin kidnapped Charlie. All right, people, take a look at our number one suspect, Santa Claus. Oh, let's go get him. Meanwhile, up at the North Pole, it's almost time for takeoff. Aw, oh, Comet, you wrote me a card. Thanks. Yeah, well, don't think I like you now because I still, ooh, Comet does love scratchies. All right, son, let's do this. It's been a year since we flew this thing. Let's take it nice and easy. Where should we go first, son? My house, please. That way I get dibs on any present in the bag. Uh, okay. Little does Mr. Calvin know, the police are waiting there to ambush him. Freeze, Santa. Hammers and hoedowns. You scared the daylights out of me. So the cops arrest Santa, which stinks for Charlie because now he's stuck on a roof. Hot uh, guys. Hello, kids stuck on a roof here. But the elves decide to fight back. Santa and the child are in peril. Dispatch the ELFS. ELFS, get it? It's got double meaning. <laughs> we are clever. Sup, <laughs> 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 so, Charlie? Want to help us bust your dad out of jail? A jailbreak with a squad of jetpack wearing elves? I am so in. We I can fly. The elves use special Christmas magic to bust Santa out. <laughs> And the first place they go is right back to where Santa got arrested. That ain't too smart, but what do I know? I'm just a magic horsey. Then, possessed by the Christmas spirit, Charlie's mom realizes Mr. Calvin really is Santa. See, this lady gets it. Son, I've got to go deliver the rest of the presents. You stay here with your mom. What? But I'll miss you, Dad. It's me. I have returned. Bernard! Charles, do you remember when I said the snow globe would be important later? Well, it's later. Oh, snap. 
If you ever miss your papa, just shake it, and he shall visit you. Cool. It's like a weird round cell phone. Nobody breaks out of my jail. Surround the house, boys. But they were too late to catch old St. Scott. He is Shandy Claus. Where's Rudolph? Did he get fired or something? One last thing before I go. Present bombs! Soccer ball? My dad's literally Santa, and all I get's a soccer ball? Merry Christmas, everybody. Ho, 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 and such. Now, Charlie, be gentle with this snow globe. It's a finely tuned piece of magical craft. Josh, ah, Charlie, what are you doing? Hiya, what do you need, son? Just wanted to go for one last ride before the credits. Well, hop in, partner. Merry Christmas to y'all. And to y'all, I'm the Prince of Christmas. Woohoo! Hey, uh, wait a minute. Dad, Dad, we're heading right for the moon. Pull up, pull up! Ah! Wow, that was neat. It kind of was a nature documentary. Yeah, I'll admit, it was not not funny. <sighs> and that Timothy Allen is a fine actor. So what was the valuable lesson this movie taught us? If you find a dead Santa, don't put on his clothes. Well, I was thinking the importance of spending time with... And don't read the curse on his business card. <laughs>